very sort of peculiar sight. One which I've been rather fond of. After the moon. It's a calm, natural, opulent sight. But also eerie at the same time. Like it's the ghost of its bright, nightly self. Clear skies today. First in a long time. Really it has been a drab, nebulous winter. In class today, we were reading Tennessee Williams. And of course, the discussions amongst the students left, led to love and conflict and passion. Then we talked about the nature of dysfunctional relationships, or at least relationships that appear not to function. It can be difficult to discuss the passionate complexities of these combinations of dependence and desire with almost seizing ignominy. We talked about the suffering of characters in William's plays, and the diligence and grace of those characters. And I was reminded during my students' typically passionate analysis of Gretchen, my wife, and her book, one of the few that were published. Here it is. It's a poem in here called Of Moon and Sky. I always keep a copy on my desk. Not that I need to. It's a text that I can never fail to recite. I always knew the poem was about me. It was always obvious. She always tried to make it seem like it wasn't directly about me. She tried to declare the voice to be a kind of pastiche, a composite voice, an attempt to make the text more universal. But I always knew. I always wondered why she'd want to hide the subject. But I think she was very guarded with things like that. It's quite a big deal. Letting someone know that they're your muse. It's a big step. You run the risk of making yourself vulnerable. I mean, I guess she thought that if she admitted it, then I would have some sort of emotional power over her. I first met Gretchen in, it must have been the summer of 87. Me and several of my friends and colleagues had contributed to a book on the works of John Steinbeck to be published by the NYU Press. And there was a party being held to celebrate the completion of the book at the editor's house over in Brooklyn. And I'd heard of this woman, a friend of the editor's, a poet, a Plath scholar, a bit wild, outspoken, they said. A small town girl who'd come out from Ohio to the big city. A bit like me. I grew up in Leeds in Britain and won a scholarship to study over here in Cornell. So my colleagues told me she was lively, a bit fierce, but in fact, when we first met, she was quite shy, very dainty, a handsome woman. We talked and drank. We discussed Steinbeck and Woody Guthrie and Dylan, the communist witch hunt, and Plath and Hughes. Later on, we went for a walk, and I remember looking at the clear night sky. In the moonlight, she looked phantasmal, delicate. I loved walking at night. It was that night when I realized why I had come here. It was not some exploration of new places. It wasn't even to get away from the dull, gray, industrial, inner city wasteland of my youth. It wasn't a search for cloudless sunsets. Come here to fall in love, to be lost in an adventure, finding this person. I remember the following August, one hot sunny afternoon, we drove about by the New England pastures. We abandoned the car and ran as fast as we could through the wheat fields. It was a perfect day. We were drenched in sunshine and totally surrounded by light. We eventually found shade under a tree and watched the day fall. A few years later, we were married. And by 1994, we were both teaching together at Cornell. We were living in Ithaca, New York. 
one night we were emotionally entangled, dispute and passion and tears over something or other. You see, Gretchen was a very emotional person. She was defined and strong, but she was conflicted, troubled, and could often be violent. She had a tendency to drink therapeutically. It was a Wednesday night in the fall of 1994. She stormed out of the house and got in the car. I tried to stop her, but she was always so stubborn. It made me feel sick to think of her driving off like that into the darkness, barely awake, blinded by tears. They found her car the next morning in the woods. I waited all night, thinking that maybe she'd been pulled over and I'd have to come bail her out. Or perhaps she'd just gone to a bar downtown and fucked someone. But of course she didn't come back. I never really blamed myself for what happened. Maybe if I was a different person, Gretchen wouldn't have gotten the car to get away. But then again, if I was a different person, maybe she wouldn't have ever fallen in love with me at all. In the months that followed after that, I noticed the sky more, or rather the lack of it. The clouds were full and connected one constant grey, dark roof, always lingering, blocking, suffocating me. I tried to find my clear skies, my perfect sunsets. I wanted to feel alive again. So when I was offered a post at UCLA, I swiftly moved over to California. It was a comforting at first, but for some reason, it quickly became the norm. Tired, old, too familiar. It was too much for me. I felt like California was strangling me. So eventually I got out of California and moved back to the Northeast. It was then that I realized why I liked it here so much. Today was a perfect cloudless day. When I got home from work, it was late afternoon, and I lay in bed and watched the sky from my window. I watched every second of it. The endless sky, stretching out into upwards oblivion. I saw a gentle, quiet tornado of birds. And later, as it got darker, the picture turned to a sick, cold twilight and everything was burning out in magnificence. The dying day, blushing in the sky. I didn't want to fall asleep because I didn't want to miss a single moment of the process. And I didn't want to die in fear of missing another sunset. Like how I got that strange feeling when I met Gretchen. I felt this overwhelming fear a feeling of not wanting to, to die because I didn't want to miss out on seeing her again. It was something I never felt before. It's nightfall now. The skies are clear. I often feel like the stars protect me, like a blanket of wonder. You do feel some kind of withdrawal after a sunset. The sick feeling of draining, draining fallen light. But I don't feel despair for too long. I take comfort in the knowledge that I will see the sunset again at some point. You see, happiness and sadness, darkness and light need to be balanced, cyclic. It's like Gretchen wrote in that poem of hers. 
In patience and cycle I cannot die. For I am a man of moon and sky.